Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto become the Omniform Shinobi with the Power Omnitrix? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. With a violent clash of techniques, a demonized Naruto and curse mark bearing Sasuke met in the air above the Valley of the End. A whirlwind of red surrounded Naruto, black around Sasuke, and they were engulfed in a bright light. Then the most peculiar thing happened. The light turned into a black sphere that slowly grew, obstructing the waterfall and soon destroying the statues of Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara. Then white lines raced across the surface, and it exploded in light again, revealing both boys, completely normal unable to move on the valley floor. Looks like we're both down Dobi, said Sasuke right before he passed out. I guess we are then Teme. He then passed out. Then a green light flashed in the sky into the valley, and Naruto suddenly disappeared. Not a second after the light faded, Kakashi appeared in the valley and spied Sasuke, but no Naruto. He looked around in hope? Naruto? Naruto? He yelled, hoping the explosion just killed the boy. He was the reason that the Yandaimi had died. See Kakashi like everyone else despised Naruto and had even joined in on the beating that he had as a child because the Yandaimi was the closest thing he had as a father and didn't want to believe that the demon could have just disappeared so he just sided with everyone else. Naruto is the Kayubi. He summoned his dog pack and ordered them to search out Naruto. He waited for half an hour, when the dogs returned, all somber, he knew the truth. Naruto was gone. Happy that his favorite student has revenged his sensei, he picked up Sasuke, dismissed the pack, and made his way back to Konoha. Elsewhere, ah, uh, what hit me? Naruto groaned as he rose from his sleep, rubbing his throbbing head. Looking around, he noticed he was in some sort of dark room, a tray of surgical tools next to the examination table he was on, and some weird black ball above him, green circuitry lines emanating from the silver-edged symbol of an angular green hourglass on a black background. I see you're awake. An aged voice emanated from seemingly nowhere, shocking Naruto. Who's there? Where are you? Where am I? He asked fervently, preparing to dodge any form of attack if this was an ambush. Relax, boy, I'm not your enemy, nor will I ever be. I'm down here. The voice explained, Naruto turning his head down to a tiny platform that floated next to the table. A tiny, gray creature stood on it, aided by a cane. He had an almost toad-like head with wide green eyes with rectangular pupils, a long, white beard that touched the floor, and it wore green robes with black trim. Whoa! What are you? Naruto asked wide-eyed. I am an alien called a Galvan. I hail from Galvan Prime in the Andromeda system. Your planet, Earth, is thousands of light-years from my home. In the galaxy are various creatures that are greater or lesser than humans, it's all a matter of perspective. I have been keeping my eye on you, Naruto for an experiment I have in mind," the creature said. Naruto's eyes widened at the influx of information of life beyond the stars, then narrowed at the mention of an experiment. Why should I consent to being experimented on like a guinea pig? And what is this experiment, anyway? He asked cautiously. He sure as hell wasn't going to say yes, but it wouldn't hurt to know. My brother, Azimuth, and I had a rivalry for inventions. He wanted to create the ultimate device that held the DNA of all aliens, I wanted to make the ultimate life form that had the DNA of all aliens. I was banished from Glavin Prime when I was found with various blood samples of creatures and the council assumed the worse. My brother fought for my sake, but it was for naught, and I was cast to the stars. However, I haven't done this experiment on others because of the very same reason I believe you are the perfect subject. So many changes would tear someone from the inside out, but as I watched you, I've found many things that will ensure your safety. The demon in your gut, he gives you advanced regeneration. That would be useful to survive the process. And the natural resilience of your clan, combined with your indestructible will to survive, and you are the perfect candidate. And why should you say yes? Simple. You can use this power to save those precious to you if you had any in that despicable village of yours. That and you don't have anywhere else to go because there is an execution order on your head for defeating that brat the other day. I know that you always wanted to get a new start and I can give it to you. After this experiment, I will ask you for one favor, the final phase of my bet with my brother, then you may do what you wish. 
I will not take the changes away. I will not keep you as my puppet. I will not limit you in any way. So what do you say? He asked, holding his tiny hand out. Naruto took a while to think over the proposition. In the existence of space, there may be powerful creatures, impossibly strong, and he'd have that strength to do as he pleases and have a new life. Nodding to the Galvan, he extended his hand and shook the creature's tiny hand with his finger. So what's your name? You know mine but I don't yours, he asked. My name is Merlin, and thank you for agreeing to this. And don't worry. I know you hate needles, so you'll be unconscious and your nerves will be dulled so they won't hurt you. Now please lay down so we may begin, he asked of him. Nodding, Naruto laid back down, looking up at the machine above him, and closed his eyes as it emanated waves on a certain frequency that knocked him out and dulled his sense of touch, and the process began. Three hours later, Naruto finally roused from his sleep, clutching his head again as the influx of so many foreign things invaded his mind so many senses, so much knowledge he wasn't privy to before, such strange worlds flashed before his eyes, it was almost overwhelming. But his strong will allowed him to remain conscious, so he hung his legs over the side of the bed Merlin put him in after the operation and attempted to stand and take his first step, only to shoot across the room and slam into the wall in a silver blur. Ow! He whispered, but it echoed to a deafening degree, shattering all glass in the room and creating spiderweb cracks in the ceiling. His eyes widened at that, then glowed green and lasers shot out, shooting through the ceiling. After that, he just slowly and calmly got back up and went back to the bed, laid down, and just stayed still. With the subconscious wish of being restricted so he didn't up anything else, his body was suddenly wrapped in dark grey bandages, turning him into a certifiable mummy. Freaking out for a few seconds, Naruto realized this was for the best, and stopped wriggling, waiting for Merlin. After about five minutes, Naruto having fallen asleep after two, Merlin arrived in a comically tiny door in the bottom of the normal door. Seeing the wrapped up Naruto, broken glass, a damaged ceiling and wall, he knew the boy woke up and his powers went haywire. It was to be expected. He jumped onto the bed and walked over the Naruto's head, tapping it with his cane. Naruto, wake up. He said, watching as the boy woke up but now suffered the problem of the bandages restricting him and he didn't know how to make them go away just relax and they'll go away, he advised. Taking his advice, Naruto slowed his breathing and the bandages receded. What happened when I woke up? Naruto asked after making sure his voice wouldn't shatter any eardrums, if Merlin even had any. Well, from what I can tell, your subconscious human nature to rush everywhere activated the speed of a kinocellarin, the impact with the floor jarred the sonic waves of a sonorajin right before the eye beams of an aerophibian and your subconscious need to be restrained so you wouldn't smash anything else activated the bandages of a tepkufan. Merlin explained. Naruto gave him a blank look, not knowing what any of those things were, even after all that stuff flooded his mind when he first woke up. Alien stuff. Merlin amended. Naruto seemed satisfied with that and nodded. So how'd I control this? He asked. I estimate it will take almost 1100 years to master all 1 million species abilities. He started, only to be interrupted by Naruto's outburst. 1100 years. A million species. He yelled, bug-eyed. How the hell was he supposed to accomplish that? Relax, I have a special chamber that can help you. My grandfather created it, the hyperbolic time chamber, and for every year inside there, it will be a day out here. In three years, you will have accomplished about 1095.75 years of training. And don't worry about aging and death, several species have a concept of eternal youth. Once you reach a certain age, you will not age or suffer disease. You can still be killed, but again, several species allow several biological defenses to save you, as well as battle capabilities you will learn in the chamber. Also, he started, reaching into his pocket and pulling out a tiny cube. While you were unconscious, I sent out several drones to scan the jutsu of this world and I also had the time to take DNA samples of bloodline carriers and have given you all the bloodlines that are active at this moment, you even got the wood release. According to the scanners, this holds the information of apparently every shinobi technique in your world. This will be used in your training as well. Are you ready to begin? He asked. Naruto took a minute to think this over, then nodded. He followed Merlin to the entrance to the hyperbolic time chamber a plain pair of doors. Opening them at Merlin's behest, since it didn't have a Galvin Y door, a mini doggy door, and looked inside, finding a massive white abyss, 
a mansion in the distance flanked by two giant hourglasses. He shrugged and waved goodbye to Merlin, knowing he wouldn't see him for about 1,000 years, but three to the Galvan. Closing the doors behind him, he somehow found himself inside the mansion already, surrounded by machines that were there to aid his training and provide him with information on the various species he now held within him. A camera on an extending arm came close to him and scanned him. Scanning. Species. Unknown. Designation, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Query. Subject has DNA of 1,087 species of organisms. I was designed to help you understand these creature. Shall we begin? It asked. Naruto nodded and began his personal hell of training. Closing the doors behind him, he somehow found himself inside the mansion already, surrounded by machines that were there to aid his training and provide him with information on the various species he now held within him. A camera on an extending arm came close to him and scanned him. Scanning. Species. Unknown. Designation, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Query. Subject has DNA of 1,087,000 species of organisms. I was designed to help you understand these creature. Shall we begin? It asked. Naruto nodded and began his personal hell of training. Learning to master the several species was a task, even after Naruto learned the secret of the cage bunshin. When the clones dispelled, their memories returned to him, and that counted for jutsu, chakra control, and select bloodlines to aid training, but the muscle memory of using his powers, alien, didn't transfer, so he had to do those himself. The Kyubi aided him in his training, helping him master his Yuki since this new development in his body made him the strongest vessel he could ever have. He also taught him some demon techniques unique to foxes. His alien forms and powers were incredibly amazing, from the minuscule Galvan to the gargantuan Tokustar, aliens came in all shapes and sizes, some more deadly than others. While his skills and body improved, his mind and mentality did not falter. He saw the tragic truths of his life. Sakura would never love him. She was just a useless fangirl that threw herself at an unfeeling prick that he once called a brother who tried to kill him. He loathed Kakashi for training Sasuke more than him and Sakura, but he understood the Junin's hatred for him and his favoritism of the emo, makes you wonder why he is so into Sasuke. Those bastards hated him and held the Uchiha on a pedestal. The villagers were narrow-sighted fools, and he finally realized his heritage is the son of the Yandaimi Hokage, the same man who doomed him to this life. At first he was angry, but he grew to understand his situation on that night twelve years ago. As a side note, he asked the Kayubi, who he learned was named Kurama, why he attacked Konoha. Kurama explained he was under the control of a Mangekyu Sharingan of a man the elemental nations thought long dead, Uchiha Madara. The bastard trapped him in a genjutsu after ripping him out of his mother just after Naruto was born and sicked him on Konoha, but Minato quickly broke their bond and sealed half the Kayubi's chakra with himself in the Shinigami's stomach, and half in Naruto. Kurama proved to be a valuable friend and ally in this case, and Naruto vowed he would get revenge for him on Madara for causing so much suffering for all the people that died that day, for manipulating Kurama like a puppet, and for dooming him to a life of ostracism. But the anger did not consume, and he came out on top, for the better. For 1000 years, Naruto trained in jutsu and alien powers, he had stopped aging when he turned 18, and he and Kurama were completely fused when he mastered the ninth tale. Naruto was essentially the new Kyubi. Time came and went, and the day came when Naruto would exit the chamber. He decided that he should have one more simulated fight just for old time's sake so he set the computer for a Vaxorian, Humungasaur. Fight. Roar. Was the only thing that the giant lizard alien said before it charged at Naruto. Well I guess I set it on easy, oh well. All he had to do was lift his arm and his opponent ran right into it and knocked himself out. Now that was just plain sad. Thought Naruto with a sweat drop. Approaching the double doors came a brand new Naruto. Tall, lean, built, overall better. From his laughable height of almost 5 feet, he was now 6 feet 7 inches, void of body fat. His face was angular and his eyes were now crimson with slits, showing his merge with Kurama. His now red highlighted hair grew to between his shoulders, two bangs framing his face and shadowing his now jagged whisker marks. Having outgrown his horrid orange jumpsuit, Naruto acquired new clothes in the chamber. He actually wore a nanosuit, a smart fabric made entirely of nanobots that repaired itself and changed its style and colors to suit his personal needs. 
Right now, it was a form-fitting black light armored suit with black gloves and boots, red armor on his torso, biceps, hips, and a pair of red wraparound shades on his face. Taking his shades off and bracing his eyes, he opened the door and walked out, leaving an unfortunately totaled mansion of mechanisms behind him, stepping into the outside world again after three one thousand ninety fifths of a year. It was weird saying which because of the time difference. Point was, he was back on the outside, and who better to greet him than the creature that made it all possible. Yo Merlin. What have you been doing all this time? He greeted the Galvin. Merlin was currently drinking a tiny cup of a human drink called tea, but looked up and smiled at Naruto. Naruto my boy, where does the time go? I've just been working on some inventions of mine, keeping track of my brother's, subject, for his own creation, and monitoring your home. Quite a lot has happened since you've been gone. He informed the blonde, setting his tea down. Like what? Naruto asked, tilting his head slightly. Well, for starters, your leader, Tsunade, has declared you dead. The villagers started to celebrate while the ninja were burning down your apartment and from what my drones have monitored, the boy I found you with was given a medal and a promotion for killing the demon brat, and no one even mentioned that he was trying to defect from the village. The civilians blame both you and this Orochimaru for making him dirty his hand with the blood of a demon. Dear child, how you could stand twelve years of their idiocy is beyond me. Merlin complained, shaking his head at the villagers' view on Naruto, even after he helped them survive an invasion and brought their new leader back to the village. Naruto merely snorted. I went through hell to get him back, for them, so I believe they should all just die and rot in hell for all I care maybe next time there is an invasion I will help the invader. So what was this final phase you mentioned before I left? He asked, chuckling at the thought of the destruction of the leaf. A. N. Naruto has had a horrible childhood in that village and has nothing left to go back to but revenge. Ik Naruto is OOC but I like the fix where he is like this, it makes it fun. Yes, the final part of my bet with my brother. I wish you'd engage his subject, Ben Tennyson, in a fight to see which of our experiments comes out on top then I will send you wherever you want. But before that, I wish to give you something. Floating over to a blanketed mound on his little platform, he grabbed the cloth and pulled, showing. A badge with a silver galvan hourglass insignia. I know it's not much to look at, but it's a weapon that will adapt to any alien form you choose and become an appropriate weapon for that form. It doesn't work for celestial sapiens or anodites, since the former can literally do anything, and the latter can create anything out of its mana. It'll even make a weapon for your human form. Try it out. He explained, gesturing for Naruto to pick it up. Nodding, Naruto picked the badge up and just looked at it. The hourglass blinked and the texture of the badge turned to the consistency of a galvanic mechamorph, a black mass with silver circuit lines, and transformed into a weapon Naruto chose first. It could change to other weapons when he was human. It took the form of a black katana with silver leather on the handle with an hourglass shaped guard. Thankfully, Naruto learned kenjutsu within the chamber both because of several alien powers, and for some bloodline, jutsu from the holocron. He gave it a few experimental swings and found it to be perfect and willed it to return to its badge form and clipped it to his pants. Thanks, Merlin. Well, let's go meet Ben so I can kick his ass. He joked, smiling foxily. Merlin chuckled and had his platform float him to the command terminal, commanding the ship to go to the other side of Earth, above Bellwood. Just go in the escape pod and I'll drop you down, he explained. Nodding, Naruto walked to the escape pod, having the knowledge of any Galvan ship from the species in his head, and stepped in, strapping himself down. After about half a minute, he felt the pod shake and the sudden jerk as it was launched from the ship. Thankfully, he didn't feel the intense heat of re-entry, and the pod would allow him to land while not turning into a pile of goo inside of it from the G-force. Bellwood, Mr. Smoothie. So we're all agreed. No listening to little girls from space sending messages about her planet at war. Ben mentioned, ignoring the rather mean decision. Oh yeah. You got a new alien, yeah, but by the end of the day, an entire planet hates us. And that girl got all my loot. Kevin complained, hanging his head in despair. Gwen just sighed, shaking her head at the turn of events on that distant planet that started with a message from a girl named Probity. A war between red and blue armies, Ben gets a new alien. Ben partially succeeds then does something stupid, and now the entire planet is at war again and everyone, including the girl that first enlisted their help, hates their guts. Before anyone could change the subject, 
A large mass fell from the sky and landed dangerously close to Kevin's car, flipping it over and wrecking it. My car. Not again. Kevin yelled, hanging his head in sorrow, his car was cursed, he swore. Ignoring the moping Kevin, Ben readied himself to activate the Ultimatrix, Gwen powered up her projectiles in her hands, as the smoke and dust settled to show the mass was some kind of pod, as the surface facing them began to push out, steam pouring the door lowered, they were surprised to find a human stepping out of the pod, especially since it had the symbol of Galvin's. You Ben Tennyson? The blonde teen asked. Gwen looked the boy up and down and blushed faintly. Yeah. Ben answered, raising a brow. I'm Naruto, and I've come to kick your ass. Before anyone could change the subject, a large mass fell from the sky and landed dangerously close to Kevin's car, flipping it over and wrecking it. My car. Not again. Kevin yelled, hanging his head in sorrow, his car was cursed, he swore. Ignoring the moping Kevin, Ben readied himself to activate the Ultimatrix, Gwen powered up her projectiles in her hands, as the smoke and dust settled to show the mass was some kind of pod, as the surface facing them began to push out, steam pouring out. As the door lowered, they were surprised to find a human stepping out of the pod, especially since it had the symbol of Galvin's. You Ben Tennyson? The blonde teen asked. Gwen looked the boy up and down and blushed faintly. Yeah. Ben answered, raising a brow. I'm Naruto, and I've come to kick your ass. The blonde responded plainly, yet grinning foxily, causing Gwen's blush to intensify slightly, further enraging Kevin in his head. What makes you think you can? Ben asked, narrowing his eyes, being overconfident was his thing. Let's just say I got a lot of experience. Now let's go. Naruto instigated, grabbing his Galvan badge and willing it to form into a Fuma Shuriken, black blades with silver edges and the hourglass symbol forming a handguard over the circle where he holds it. He threw the weapon, just in time for Ben to slam his hand down, turning into a giant, orange humanoid dinosaur. Humungasaur. Ben, roared his rough hide deflecting the weapon, sending it back to Naruto. Ah, a Vaxorian. How did I know you would resort to brute force from the get-go? Naruto commented, smirking as black cracks spread across his face and arms as his hands turned to red-orange stone, glowing with an unknown blue energy. But with a bit of Galilean, everything big and tall must fall. He raised his hand, and Humungasaur rose in the air against his will and was thrown to the side when Naruto flicked his wrist in the same direction. Kevin was gobsmacked at what just happened, but brushed it off and absorbed the metal of his car after running to it and turned his hands into a mace and hammer, running at Naruto, intent on smashing his smug face in. And a pair of hybrids, Osmosian and Anodite, quite the colorful gang. Naruto commented as Gwen attempted to herd him towards the berserker Kevin with her bolts, raising his right arm up as it turned silver and a circle of silver energy forming a shield for him, blocking both the bolts and Kevin's steel attacks. Dropping the shield his arm turned to stone segments, a black wristband with silver spikes forming, as he punched Kevin in the chest, but the size of his fist also affected his stomach, cracking his steel skin and sending him flying. He transformed his other arm to match to block the downward hammer strike from Humungasaur, now twice as tall and covered in segmented armor and spikes, successfully blocking the gargantuan creature's attack, shocking everyone watching, and pushing him back, grabbing his chest and causing silver electricity to race across his body, his eyes turning to silver light with arcing sparks as he attacked Ben. Ben roared in pain at the shocks coursing through his body, but managed to kick Naruto off, landing on his back. Sitting up, he decided to level the playing field and slammed on the symbol on his chest, evolving his form. His hide turned dark green and he formed a blue plate on his head, chest and stomach, and a shell-like carapace on his back, green spikes down his head and black ones on the sides of his face, green quills at the sides of his chest and armored stomach, a blue edge and massive spikes on his shell. His tail grew a blue mace with green spikes and he formed green spikes on his knuckles, which he transformed his hands into barrels that shot rockets at Naruto. The blonde shinobi dodged with ease, smirking the entire time. More firepower isn't always better. Then again. He started his head and arms erupting in blue and purple flames, the latter forming molten plates on his skin, as he created a giant fireball and threw it towards ultimate Humungasaur, melting his missiles and continuing on its way to the evolved alien, exploding on impact. Sometimes it is. He finished, still smirking. He dodged Kevin's literal hammer strike from behind, 
snapping his mouth open as he grew the jaws of a Piscis Volon and chomped on his steel skin, flailing him around and finally throwing him towards Ultimate Humungasaur, smacking his lips afterwards. Hum. Why does steel have that coppery taste like pennies? He mused to himself. He immediately began to dodge Gwen's barrage of bolts as a silver blur. He then cloaked himself to match the environment and snuck up on her, immediately wrapping her in bandages and lifting her into the air. Do you yield? He asked. She struggled for a bit but stopped and sighed. Fine, she said. By the way, I can feel through these bandages, he said plainly, smirking as she blushed crimson when she felt the bandages around her behind move a bit. He stopped teasing her and set her down, patting her head, smirking as her blush almost matched her hair. He immediately dodged Kevin's berserk rush, swinging his mace hand around, and slammed his forehead into Kevin's, his head temporarily turning into grey stone, sending Kevin flying. He quickly shifted his head back to normal and shook it, clearing his thoughts and muttering under his breath. Ing non sapient species, a crustacedozer always makes my mind fuzzy, and it's not the completely rocky composition. Kevin immediately came back with a vengeance, wanting to smack Naruto's head off, but the blonde merely sighed at his violent jealousy when he was just teasing Gwen and willed a swarm of red snake heads to sprout from his back, all equipped with Piscis jaws, as they snapped at Kevin and tore off his steel skin, tossing him aside and leaving him in defeat. Finally came Ben, who changed from ultimate Humungasaur to way big, immediately going ultimate. Naruto craned his neck as far as it could to look at the gigantic evolved Tokustar. Well, Shit. He commented. Sighing, he strung his hands together into seals and slamming them on the ground. Kachiyose no jutsu, he yelled, creating a massive cloud of smoke. When it cleared, he appeared on a giant black fox with eight tails, which was just a bit taller than way big. Looking up at the red, white, and blue alien, the fox only had one thing to say. Kami damn it, boss, what have you done to piss of this thing? Haven't you learned not to piss off giant up? Whatever the that thing is, she asked, sighing. I just need you to hold him down. I plan to bring him down with one hit Mia. Naruto said to the now named Mia. Sighing again, Mia nodded. Fine. But you owe me another drink after this, and I mean the demon kind not the shit you humans drink. She reaffirmed him, bringing her tails together. Sweden. Tepudama. She yelled, spitting out massive projectiles of water, sending ultimate way big skidding back, not ready for the elemental attack still reeling from his opponent summoning a giant talking fox out of nowhere. Yeah, sure thing Mia. Naruto responded as he gathered chakra in both his hands, summoning a pair of clones who aided in them. While he managed to master the Rasengan to a level where he could conjure it instantly, and with one hand, he needed a clone and time for what he had planned. His concentration wavered when Mia slid to the side to dodge Ultimate Way Big's massive beam attack, but he finished by the time Mia landed and used the fox's head as a springboard, growing a pair of aerophobian wings to continue towards the transformed Tennyson's face, brandishing a pair of elemental Rasengan, the left one heading for Wei Big's face surrounded by fire, the right having four points of wind chakra. Fire release. Swirling devastation, he yelled, tossing the spiraling ball of fire towards Wei Big's face, then he tossed the second Rasengan to the Tokuster's stomach. Fuudan. Rosenshuriken. When the flaming Rasengan hit way big, it expanded into a dome of fire, scorching his tough skin, and spun around his head for a while, as the Rosenshuriken hit his stomach and expanding into a huge dome of needles. The force of both attacks toppled way big over and he changed back to Ben when he landed, the boy's face slightly red from the aftereffects of the fire and his stomach scratched up a bit, but nothing dangerous or enough to draw blood, he'll just be really sore. Gwen being the only one conscious, was gobsmacked at what this boy accomplished, he just demolished Kevin and Ben's strongest alien, with insane attacks like he came out of a comic book. It appears I'm done here. See ya later, boss. Mia bid farewell, disappearing in an explosion of smoke as Naruto landed near Gwen. Waving at the fox, Naruto turned to Gwen and smirked at her, relishing in her confusion. How did? Why did? Where did? Ah. Gwen grabbed her head as it started to hurt from the questions she wanted to ask. Calm down, Red. I'll assume from you hanging with Ben that you're Gwen Tennyson? Naruto asked. Rubbing her temples, Gwen whimpered as she nodded. Chuckling again, Naruto split himself into triplets and had them pick up Ben and Kevin as he walked over to the elder teen's wrecked car, 
his hands glowing with a dusty yellow energy as he engulfed the wreckage in an orb of the energy and the mess contorted as if it were reversed in time, soon reforming Kevin's perfectly fine car, which he set down. The duplicates set Ben and Kevin at the table the trio of teens were previously sitting at before Naruto came to lay the smack down. He then looked over to Gwen and said, So, that was fun. Do you guys do anything besides sit around a table outside a smoothie shop? He asked trying to be polite while waiting for the boys to wake up. Well we would if we had anything better to do but with Ben all it is with him is video games and chili fries and with Kevin all he does is sell illegal alien stuff and work on his car. She said while trying not to blush while looking at him. But what do you like to do because I'm pretty sure that those two aren't in control of you, he said looking at her with a calculating look. Um. Well I like karate, gymnastics, swimming, and reading but it doesn't suit for being an everyday thing plus doing it alone is boring except for reading but I can do that anywhere. Gwen then stopped when she realized she was rambling and looked at Naruto in the face to see that he was listening to the whole thing with a smile. Well I wouldn't mind sparing with you sometimes. When he saw her pale he then added, no powers of course, which would be overkill. Sounds great to me. So, why are you here anyway? She asked. I'll tell you when these two knuckleheads wake up so I don't have to repeat myself. He said and they waited for the two teens to wake up. Once the boys woke up, Naruto greeted them with a smirk as they didn't bother attempting to fight him again, Ben holding his head in despair at his loss. Okay, how did you do that? He asked. Kick your ass. Naruto asked, smirking still. Shut up, Ben snapped. He held his face in exasperation. How did you do all those transformations? It's like you have an omnitrix, but you are it. Ben tried to reason. Nodding, Naruto finally answered. That's essentially how it is. I was spliced with the DNA of every species in the universe and thus, I have their powers and abilities. I also have the information of all species, including their strengths and weaknesses, as well as my own skills from where I came from, he explained. Team Ben was gobsmacked at this. The mere idea of every single species in one body was insane. How is your body not imploding? Ben asked. Personal matter, I have high regeneration and enhanced longevity. My body is naturally made of sterner stuff than most people, and I myself am not sure of what can outright kill me, due to my various alien powers that can heal most injuries, even lost limbs. I'm sure destroying my brain would kill me, though, maybe. Naruto ended up hypothesizing, stroking his chin in morbid thought at the possibility of his own death as if it was not a big deal. All three teens' sweat dropped at how he spoke of his death as if it was the weather. Gwen spoke up. Who did this to you? I'm sure you didn't do it to yourself, she asked. I understand you three are aware of the Omnitrix's creator, Azimuth? Naruto asked. Receiving nods, he continued. Well, after an intense battle near my homeland, his brother, Merlin, found me, and, after receiving my permission on the matter, he injected me with the DNA and allowed me to use a chamber their father made to train in my alien abilities, as well as the arts of my people. Physically, I'm 11 10 years old, but chronologically, I'm 15. The chamber let me train in 1095 years in only three, he further explained. Azimuth never mentioned a brother. Ben commented flabbergasted at the supposed age of the person who defeated him, but also intrigued when he mentioned the arts of his people. Understandable. The two had a rivalry, which is why I'm here, as part of our agreement was that, after I used the chamber, I was to come here and fight you to see which of the two brothers had the better project. Merlin's methods of retrieving all of the DNA was questioned by the Galvan Council and, while Azimuth defended him, he was exiled from the planet, and they hadn't talked since. Naruto explained once more. So what are you gonna do now? And what's this about the, art of your people? Kevin finally chipped in. I'll probably find a place here as I don't really want to go back to that, place, I had to call home. He said place as if it was the worst place on earth but they decided to ignore it because he had a right to some privacy. As for the, arts, the people where I come from are born with a source of energy that is a combination of physical and spiritual energy, which we call chakra kinda like the thing you people may call tai kai. With chakra, we can do things such as climb walls, walk on water, control the elements, and many other things you would find incredible. Naruto continued with his lecture, growing tired of explaining things. Gwen narrowed her eyes in thought at these abilities. They might be the product of another pairing of humans and some alien. Possibly a celestial sapien. Turning back to the matter at hand, she retrieved a plumber. 
the Interstellar Organization of Peacekeeping and Alien Secrecy, badge from the pocket of her skirt and offered it to Naruto, who took it. That's so you can call on us for help, now that you'll be emitting several signals some species might recognize as a beacon to come when you use their powers. You could stay here and help us if you want, we could always use the extra help. Gwen asked smiling to the blonde. Hey! Yelled both Ben and Kevin both a bit sour that they were beat and that Gwen seemed to like Naruto. Three guesses who? Smiling. Naruto brought the badge together with his amorphous weapon, absorbing it and integrating its technology into the mentally linked galvanic mechamorph tissue so it can still function as a communicator, making Naruto an unofficial plumber. Sure that would be great to get a new start in life I will be back in 15 minutes tops, I still need to go get some things from home, first. See ya in a bit. With a farewell two-fingered salute, Naruto disappeared in a blur of Kinoceleron speed, rocketing through Bellwood in the neighboring states until he made it to the western coast of the US, and ran across the water to Asia, and the elemental nations. The elemental nations weren't actually on the normal earth most people know, but due to Naruto having chakra, it allowed him pass through a pseudo-portal that took him to an overlaying plane of existence on earth that contained the elemental nations. In reality, it would appear as if Naruto disappeared from the planet. Speeding right by Mizu no Kuni and hitting the mainland of Hai no Kuni, Naruto took to the trees, traveling the conventional shinobi style, and made his way to the gates of Konoha. Sneaking inside the village was so easy due to his past of pranking and it was even easier with all his new powers. Floating near the window with his ectonorite powers, Naruto phased through the wall and landed just behind Tsunade without making a sound, he took out his badge and willed it to katana form and brought it against Tsunade's neck startling Tsunade his shades on. Who are you? Give me one good reason why I shouldn't punch your head clean of your body for invading Konoha and threatening the Hokage's life? Tsunade demanded, trying not to get up but being held in place. Well, for one thing, I'm still not sure if someone taking my head off will still kill me, but I'm not eager to try. And besides, don't you recognize me, Ba-chan? Naruto asked his voice altered slightly to sound like a double-layered voice. Tsunade grit her teeth in rage. No one called her that since the demon died, but hearing someone indeed call her by that moniker lit a flame of fear. Who are you? She asked, almost whispering it. Naruto tightened the blade and said, Why don't you take a guess, Tsunade? He said in Orochimaru's voice, Soon, you all shall be dead with me at the top of a pile of corpses with the burning remains of the leaf village all around me. Think of this as revenge for all that this village has done to me while I protected them. The leaf shall burn, this is my only warning. He then cut her head off and used his wood release to create a pike in the middle of her office and stabbed it on. He then took a bit of paper from her desk and wrote a note. To whoever the wakes the drunk up in the morning. If you were reading this it means you have found my little present. I told you all when I was young that you were going to all die this is just the beginning. You have all tortured me in my life and now I will kill you all for the pain that I had to endure. You have even kept my inheritance away from me in hopes that I wouldn't cripple you, well now you are all screwed. To the council I would like to say you will be left alive, so I can give you to Orochimaru for testing as a form of torture. Hope you all enjoy being in the Shinigami's stomach. Yane. Sincerely, Naruto Namikaze he set the letter in Tsunade's dead mouth and went to searching the office. He found and burned to forbidden scrolls so no one else could know what was in it. He went to the hung painting of his father and moved it over to see a very complex dimensional rift seal on the wall. The only reason he knew what it was is because of learning Fuenjutsu in the time chamber. He swiped some blood on it and it opened to show a walk-in closet, armory of all things. The first thing he saw was a pedestal with two letters and a key on it. He took the key and pocketed it then he looked of the letters, they both had his name on them. He opened the first letter that had rough handwriting that he supposed was his dad's and saw that as said what he expected, I had to do it, shit that he just knew would be in his dad's letter with him begging Naruto to forgive him and that he was supposed to be a hero. Well if that's how they treat a hero I don't want to be on their bad side, thought Naruto. He then picks up the other letter and sees it is written in very elegant script. He opened it and couldn't help but be surprised with what it said. Dear Sochi. If you have found this letter then that means you have been through hell on earth in the village due to human hatred. My name is Kashina Uzumaki and I am your mother Naruto. We are a proud family that is not completely human with a very rich history. The Uzumaki clan has been the world's protectors for as long as we remember, we were known as assassins to the world we killed all that got in our way of our duty. 
You and I are the last of the royal family of the assassins however we are low in number nowadays but you can find the rest outside the elemental nations, where we are called the Forever Knights. Now at the bottom of this scroll there is a seal that holds our family's royal robes that have been passed down since the first assassin of our family and is indestructible, resizable and can't be dirtied. Now I know this may sound weird to you but you should know that there are such things as aliens in this world, monsters from distant planets that have life. This is what our ancestors have been protecting the earth from for many centuries. This is now going to be your job as the new king of the Forever Knights. By the way if your father forgot to mention it in his letter now that the seal has been released the only way to get here in this room is to turn the insert that is on the pedestal into any door and it will open to here. Here also happens to be the main armory for the royal family. Oh. Before I forget being the last of the royal line means that you will have to have multiple wives, have fun with that. I wish I could be there with you to tell you all this face to face but I can't. I believe that you will be the best king we have ever had and you will lead us to a world of peace. P.S. The seal is also the royal family crest. Love your mother. Uzumaki Kashina at the bottom of the letter there was a symbol that looked like it was two scythes connected by the hilts bent facing each other with a crescent pengalum hanging between without the connection. In the center there was a weird triangle made of three thin interlocking parallelograms. Shedding a single tear Naruto activated the seal and integrated the robes into his nanosuit, folded up the letter and put it in his pocket. He was now wearing a black robe with a hood, all of it having a silver outline. He then started walked out of the room but a glance to the side and saw a wicked looking glove that had some kind of silver blade looking thing on it. He picked it up and saw that there was a tag on it saying it was a hidden blade made out of adamantium, a rare metal found only on the planet Antimeria he noticed. Grabbing the glove and putting it in its twin on he left closed the door. Naruto then phased through the window and snuck to Ichiraku Ramen stand leaving a note that told them to get out of the village because there was no help for it. He then headed for the mansion Sasuke was promoted to after returning to the village, his ownership over the Uchiha compound relinquished so he could raise the great Uchiha clan out of the ashes, following the scent of tomatoes and ash with the senses of a vulpimancer. Landing in front of the door and pulling his hood onto surprise, Sasuke, Naruto knocked and waited. Then knocked again when no one came. Then again. Then he Sparta kicked the door down, making sure whoever was inside heard. He heard stomping footsteps barrel towards the entrance to revealing an incredibly angered Sasuke, glaring heatedly at whoever that decided to break into his home, only to come face to face with an armored figure, crimson silted eyes shining on Sasuke's face from beyond the hood. Who are you? Don't you get it when someone doesn't want to answer the door? Sasuke yelled at the stranger, cursing Tsunade for the millionth time for not giving him security guards for fangirls with chakra, or he would just reduce this intruder to a pile of ash. Don't you recognize me, Teme? It's only been three years since I brought you to heal like the dog you are. Naruto reminded the Uchiha, finding extreme amusement by the shock visage of his once teammate before it turned into smoldering rage. Naruto. Sasuke roared before attempting to bull rush the blonde only for said Jinchuriki to sidestep him, grab the collar of his shirt when he passed him, and throw him back into his home, shattering a small cabinet that held everything of value to the Uchiha. Even though his chakra hadn't been used in years Sasuke still had his shinobi skills, so it didn't take him long to return to his feet and run at Naruto, swinging his fist to take Naruto's head off. He would have succeeded if Naruto wasn't a near indestructible with his new powers, b smart or c faster than him. Bringing his leg up and kicking the fist away, breaking Sasuke's wrist, Naruto shot his hand forward and grabbed Sasuke by the throat, lifting him up to eye level as the Uchiha grit his teeth in pain at his wrist and the crushing force around his throat. What? What do you want? Ak. Dobi. Sasuke ground out. Naruto brought his face closer, lowering his hood to look straight in Sasuke's eyes, grinning almost sadistically. I just came to say, hi, to an old friend is that so wrong? He said before watching Sasuke's head fall to the ground from the scissor-like blades of bone that protruded from the palm of his hand. Crouching down, he picked up the head and sealed it away for later. He then went outside and closed his eyes and concentrated, his feet flashing molten silver, his shins forming black slabs of cooled magma, he shot into the sky in a trail of fire, flipping in the air to float above the village, angelic wings bursting from his back to keep him aloft, his eyes glowing gold. A species shallowly similar to Homo sapiens, 
similar as and were angelic humanoids that were, in actuality, beings composed entirely of light, refracting ambient light to give them an appearance based on their mind. All Similaris had blonde hair and gold eyes, though. The wings were constructs of light from their bodies. In times of war, however, the naturally peace-loving species could utilize light in a variety of ways, but they never killed, only incapacitated or reduced the enemy's vehicles and weapons to scraps. Looking over the village for a bit, Naruto soon started to get brighter and brighter before he started talking his voice carrying all over the village in a tri-layered voice. Konoha is on its last legs. The demon has risen again and the next time he will destroy you all for the crimes you have committed against him. You have been warned. He finished just as Kakashi of all people got close to him. Naruto swept down so fast all everyone saw was a bright light. When the light was gone all that was left was a unconscious Kakashi with a missing eye and no face mask. Many people gasped as they saw that female lips with fangs hanging out. On an abandoned island in the Pacific Ocean, Naruto appeared in a flash of silver light in the center of the beach of an uncharted island he saw on his run home with an eye in one hand and a face mask in the other. That was way too easy he must have not been training, thought Naruto as he was sealing the eye into a scroll and putting the face mask on around his neck. Better get back to Bellwood before I'm late, he then started to run across the ocean and back to the front of Mr. Smoothie. In front of Mr. Smoothie, Gwen stood by herself in the parking lot of Mr. Smoothie waiting for Naruto to return. The boys thought he just ran off to do something bad so they were trying to track him down, but she knew better. Just as her watch hit the 15 mark she started to walk away there was a loud boom that sounded like something just broke the sound barrier. Then there was a hooded figure standing right next to her and she was about to blast him when he put his hands up in a I surrender gesture and said. Yo Gwen no need for violence I got back before the 15 minutes were up didn't I? Where are the other two anyways, they didn't leave you here by yourself did they? He asked sounding concerned. Gwen just stared at him and asked. What are you wearing? He just looked down at himself and thought, well definitely not going to help me blend in here. He then smiled and said, oops, give me a sec. He then got a look of concentration on his face and his nanosuit started to change, at the end of the change he was wearing black jeans with silver tribal designs at the waistline and at the hems, wearing black military style combat boots with silver laces and a grey three quarter sleeve button up shirt with silver tribal marking on the rolled sleeves and on the high collar. His robes shrank to a normal sized black leather jacket with the same hood and his family crest on enlarged the back, the arms having silver tribal markings on them as well. His plumber badge on his belt as if it were the buckle. He looked back at Gwen to see she was blushing so bad it matched her hair. Again, he decided to help her out a bit by asking, So how do I look now? That seemed to startle her out of her thoughts when she saw him smiling teasingly at her. You look a lot better now. The two knuckleheads thought you were playing us so you could get away and started to look for you. I tell you those two would never get anywhere without me. So did your business at home work out? She asked and when she saw the smile on his face she felt sorry for the poor sob that crossed him before he left. Yeah you could say that. So do you have any ideas where I could stay, find a job and, maybe get a decent meal? Gwen got a contemplative look on her face. Well we have a extremely handsome guy asking about good food and you are the only person around. Your cousin can't try to beat the guy to a pulp because we all know how that will turn out. I could probably talk mom and dad into letting him use Kenneth's room. Ugh what am I thinking I just met the guy. Huff. I guess I will think on it while I get a free dinner out of him. She thought conflicted. Well there is this one place about two blacks down that is good and it isn't fast food so that's good, um I'm going to have to think about a place to stay for you and you just have to look around for a job. Is that okay for you Naruto? Gwen asked him. Naruto knew what she was thinking due to some alien that was in his DNA but she didn't need to know that and he didn't really mind, he just filed it away for later reference. Sure we can do that. What type of food does this place sell? They sell Japanese food. What type of food do you like? Gwen asked. I love Japanese food that is what I was raised on. What's your favorite food, mine used to be ramen but now I like pokey the best. Naruto asked with excitement in his eyes. I like pokey too. It's like, my favorite snack ever. Gwen was ecstatic to have someone that liked the same food as her. Well what are we waiting for? Let's go. And with that Gwen and Naruto both took off in the direction of the restaurant. Gwen and Naruto just finished their pokey and were now just chatting about each other's likes and dislikes. It was surprising that they both liked the same things but they did have a squabble about the best to track someone. 
Naruto said to just sniff them out but Gwen said to follow their aura but in the end it was a draw because someone's aura could be changed or hidden while it is almost impossible to change a scent you could still cover it up. So Naruto I think I know where you could stay for a while so you could get a job and apartment. Gwen said with a small blush on her face. Really where? Naruto asked, well I was thinking you could stay in my brother's room back at home since he's at college and won't be there for a while. That should be enough time for you to get a job and apartment. So what do you say? Gwen asked a little apprehensive now that she brought her idea out into the open. Well that would be fine but shouldn't you ask your parents before offering me a room? I don't know what happens when girls bring a guy to their parents' house but I do know that by the time they come back they want to stay as far away as possible to the girls' parents afterwards. Naruto said with an overdramatic scared look on his face. Gwen just giggled before saying, don't worry they aren't that bad and, I think you have been watching way too many movies. I am not joking that's actually happened at home, it was funny to watch but when you think it will happen to you, it's scary. Naruto said quickly. Gwen lost it and started laughing loudly almost in tears. So the mighty warrior is scared of meeting the parents of a girl, she said sarcastically. Naruto just shook his head. Let's just get out of here and meet those parents of yours then Gwen. I promise I will be a good boy and not chicken out, he said jokingly. Okay then let's go, Tennyson residence, Gwen sighed. Walking into her house with a nervous Naruto Gwen yelled out, Mom, Dad, and I'm home and I brought a guest. Naruto just looked at her like she grew a second head, did you have to yell? he asked. If I wanted them to know I was home then yes, otherwise they would never know because I almost never come home. That's what working as a plumber does, always have to be away from home trying to save some planet or another. It really makes you miss home sometimes you know. She asked looking a little sad. Yeah I know exactly what you mean being on missions back at home was pretty much the same. The only difference is you have family to come back to I had no one. Naruto said in a somber tone. Before Gwen could say anything both of her parents came into the room. Describe parents. Gwen dear it's so nice to see you home. Who is your friend? Asked Mrs. Tennyson eyeing the first boy her daughter has brought home. This is my friend Naruto, he just moved back to Bellwood after his family kicked him out for an accident that changed his looks. She said giving Naruto a pointed look. He just spoke to her in her mind and told her to say that. He just thought back to her, I will explain later. Turning to the Tennysons he said while going into their minds making it more believable. Hello Mr. and Mrs. Tennyson it is a pleasure to meet you. You have a very nice home and you may not remember me but I used to live just down the street from you but we moved away about eight years ago. Both parents blinked and shook their heads like they just remembered something. Oh, Naruto what happened that your parents would kick you out? I always thought they were good people, Gwen's dad asked him like he was meeting his daughter's best friend who moved away, to them he was, he went to pat him on the back like he used to do it a lot, again he thinks he did. Gwen just stood there looking confused until she heard Naruto's voice in her head. Don't worry I just don't want to explain why I am here to them because it is way too confusing. They think that I was your best childhood friend when you were little. I will give you a full explanation when we are alone. Gwen tried to process what he said and thought back, you better. Well there was this weird scientist up in Maine and he created a giant fox that was the size of a bear and had nine tails. When we were camping I was bitten by the fox and I started thrashing around before passing out. When I came to, I was changed and there was a letter on my chest telling me to leave. I found my way back to our house just to be told by my parents that, at this point he was wiping away tears, fake, looking sad. I wasn't any son of theirs and I needed to go back to hell. When they told me that I walked away, that night I broke into my old room took what I could and bolted to the only place I could think of and, that was here in Bellwood. He took one look at Gwen and winked. Ask them about the room and then you can show me to it and then I will tell the truth and clarify some things, just work with me. How does that sound? Fine. She thought back before actually opening her mouth and saying, Hey mom, dad is it okay if Naruto uses Kenneth's room until he can get the money to rent an apartment? Gwen asked in a sweet innocent voice. Both of her parents looked at each other for a moment, looked back at them and said, Why sure he can honey? Any friend of yours is welcome to stay here. Naruto dear we are sorry for the way your parents treated you, you can stay as long as you need, said Mrs. Tennyson. Thank you Mrs. Tennyson, said Naruto as he was being dragged upstairs by an eager Gwen. Kenneth's empty room. Gwen barged into her brother's room with Naruto trailing behind her. When he walked in he had to blink. The room was so clean. 
bleach white carpets, white beds set on a dark oak wood frame and white walls, in other words it been bleached. He had only one thought, wow this guy must really like the color white. It's like looking at the sun in here. He then looked up and saw Gwen sitting on the bed looking at him with a raised eyebrow. Where do you want me to start? Well how about the part where you were controlling my parents' mind? Or why you had to lie to them in the first place? Gwen asked exasperated. I lied to them because it would be too troublesome to explain it all to regular people and I don't feel comfortable enough to be telling my life story to people I know for a fact won't understand one lick of it. How did you feel when you had to explain your powers to them and how you possess them? I know for a regular human that would be hard. Now I only looked through their mind enough to see how much they knew and it wasn't much, oh by the way they knew you had powers since you were three but didn't want to tell you hoping you never found out about them. Now that little story I told while not all true, it is to some extent. On my part of the world there is a whole community of human, celestial sapien, alien X, hybrids. We use our powers, chakra, as a military weapon for our village capitals, hidden villages. About 5000 years ago there was a great war between a giant wolf creature that was produced through the union of a wolf and celestial sapien. This monster was known by the Jubi or Ten Tails because it had ten tails. It was defeated by the person we knew as the Sage of Six Paths. He was the first child of the first hybrid. He sealed the Jubi inside his own body, on his deathbed he used his powers to split the Jubi's power and conciseness into nine parts that we then knew as the Biju or Tailed Beasts. Each one of them were given a different form like there was the nine-tailed fox, eight-tailed ox, bull, seven-tailed beetle, six-tailed dolphin, horse, five-tailed, find out, four-tailed ape, three-tailed turtle, two-tailed hellcat, and the one-tailed raccoon. These beasts saw the sage as their father and promised to protect the land they were given. These were peaceful creatures for thousands of years until about 100 years ago or so when we hybrids figured out how to control, seal them. Gwen looked at Naruto with a plain look on her face and said, and how does this have anything to do with you? I was getting to that. Naruto yelled. Anyways where was I? Oh yeah. The first Hokage was the only person known to control wood but the thing about the wood he controlled was that it sapped the power from those that were caught in it. He was able to capture and seal all of the tailed beasts except for the last one, the nine tails. There was this epic fight between the first and his best friend Madara Uchiha. Madara summoned the nine tails and used his powers to create a set of armor to cover it, when the first restrained the nine tails, his wife Mito Uzumaki my great grand aunt sealed the fox inside herself creating the first ever Jinjiriku. A human sacrifice to be the container of the beasts. All of the villages that were given biju for peace offering started making Jinjiriku left and right to boost their military power to the highest levels. At Mito's deathbed my mother was chosen to be the next container of the nine tails. The day I was born a person saying they were Madeira came to take the fox away from my mother because birth is the one time when the seal is at its weakest. He took the fox and forced it to attack the village. My father the fourth leader of our village had to fight the fox and managed to teleport it to the outskirts of the village and summon the death god, he didn't really it was just a personification of death we created, and sealed half of the fox's power into himself and the other half into me. When the fox saw that it was about to be sealed again it tried to kill me but my almost dead mother and father got in the way to protect me. Since then I have been ridiculed by the villagers and chased by mobs on my birthday almost beaten to death multiple times, at the age of four I was kicked out of the orphanage and living on the street for two years before the third Hokage got me an apartment and a monthly allowance. It was still bad with people breaking into my apartment and overcharging me for the littlest things. I mean I had to wear a neon orange jumpsuit till Merlin picked me up. When I was in the chamber me and the Kyubi fused and I got all of his power. Now I'm here, I can tell by the look on your face you are having a hard time believing this, so imagine your parents getting the same thing. I hope you aren't mad at me. So is there anything else you want to know? He stopped to take a breath. When he looked at Gwen she looked like she was going to start crying. Is that all true? Please tell me it's not, that is the most disgusting thing I have ever heard. How could people do that to a child who had no choice in the matter? Are they still around because when I get my hands on them I will. Whoa, Gwen slow down there is no needed for you to need to do anything I already have a plan for them but you need to calm down. Naruto said a little frantically. They aren't going to hurt me anymore and they are not your problem. Now when you calm down we will talk more. Three minutes later Gwen calmed down enough for Naruto to talk to her. They spent the night just sitting on the bed talking. 
sharing stories of what they did in the past and laughing at some of their mistakes. Around six Gwen's mom yelled at them to get to dinner. Dinner was something that Naruto didn't expect they had all his favorite foods and was about to ask how they knew what he liked when he remembered that he and Gwen both liked Japanese food. After dinner the Tennysons and their guests sat in the family room and watched a soccer game. By 11 they were all tired and Gwen fell asleep on Naruto's shoulder about an hour before so Naruto bid her parents good night picked up Gwen in a princess carry and brought her to her room. Gwen's room was smaller than Kenneth's room but besides that it was a darker version of his room. He gently put Gwen on her bed and tried to make sure that he didn't wake her. When he went to his room he didn't go straight to bed instead he wrote two letters and summoned a fox to deliver it to someone in the elemental nations to a person he didn't think he would ever need to contact ever. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.